Hello, welcome back to Computer Depot's Tech Classroom. In today's lesson, we are going to talk to you about a network. You may know it as the internet or Wi-Fi, but it is much deeper than that. And we are going to break down what a network is and how it helps to keep the world connected. And of course, if you need any of the products mentioned in this video, you can get them at a Computer Dipper store near you. Ready to take notes? Let's get into it. In the world of information technology, networking is the interconnecting of two or more computer systems or devices linked together physically by cables, switches, routers, or wirelessly by means of Wi-Fi access points. Anything that transfers data does this through a network. Whether you are browsing the web or simply playing a game on your smartphone, networking plays a vital part in our day-to-day -day lives. Without it, everything would stop working as we know it. We depend on the transferring of data every day to complete simple and complex tasks. A network has multiple parts that work together to ensure no data is lost between the connected devices. Here are some core components of a standard network. Internet Service Provider. Choosing a reputable ISP is a critical component of having a reliable home network. Though a network can be established without this, having internet access will enable you to connect with the world instead of just the devices in your household. You also want to take note of the internet speed that will be available with the package being chosen from your ISP, as faster internet connection will greatly affect your web experience. Having a higher speed means that you can have more devices connected to your home network. This also makes it less likely that users will have to wait for content or videos to load. Having a 20 to 50 megabit per second connection is good enough for a household with 5 to 10 devices, which would include your smartphone, TV, desktop, and laptop. It is also necessary to know the type of connection provided by the ISP, whether it is a dedicated internet access or a shared internet access. Dedicated internet access means that the bandwidth you purchase is for your use only. There are no other users sharing the connection, so the speed advertised is usually the speed you get. DIA services also provide the same upload and download speed. While it typically comes at a cost, DIA provides business-grade features and higher speeds than many shared access alternatives. Shared internet access provides bandwidth up to a maximum specified speed, which is utilized by many subscribers in a specific geolocation. Shared internet access providers use high bandwidth speeds to attract new customers, but these advertised speeds are often the maximum possible. Because access is shared, the available bandwidth is split between all concurrent users. Providers bank on the fact that not everyone will be uploading or downloading large files, streaming videos, or web conferencing at the same time. But in reality, bandwidth speed depends on what the user population is doing as a whole. If a large number of other customers are using their connection at the same time as you, the speed will be slower. Modem. Modem is short for modulator demodulator. It is a hardware component that allows a computer or another device, such as a router or switch, to connect to the internet. It converts or demodulates an analog signal from a telephone or cable wire to digital data that a computer can recognize. What this means is that your ISP modulates the data into a form where it is easier to travel over a large distance at rapid speeds. Your modem at home then receives that data and converts it back to digital form, allowing your devices to access the World Wide Web. Users are connected to the modem via a patch or Ethernet cable. Switch. Let's say there is one network printer in the house, but each user has his or her own computer. Instead of physically connecting to the printer 
and disconnecting every time you need to use it. A network switch will allow everyone to use the printer without the need to disconnect. This is because a network switch provides additional networking ports for devices such as computers, printers, and wireless access points to connect and communicate with each other. A switch is useful if your router doesn't have enough Ethernet ports, if you have a lot of wired devices in one place like an entertainment center or living room, or if you're trying to use wires to improve your speeds or cut down on wireless interference. Wireless access point is a networking device that allows wireless capable devices to be connected to a wired network. It is easier to install wireless access points to connect all of the computers and devices on your network than to use individual wires and cables. Using a wireless access point allows you to create a wireless network within your existing wired network. Wireless repeaters. A Wi-Fi repeater or extender is used to extend the coverage of your Wi-Fi network. If your Wi-Fi signal is weak in a specific area, placing a repeater in that area will allow you to extend the signal. It does this by receiving the Wi-Fi signal, amplifying the signal, and then the signal is rebroadcasted over a wider range. This method does not require a hardwire connection from the repeater to the router. It is all wirelessly done. Wireless Routers Imagine a busy crossroad in downtown Montego Bay with no stoplight. The junction would be gridlock for hours because there is no system in place to tell drivers when to stop and go. The router plays a similar role to a stoplight in this scenario. It is used to direct data packets between two or more networks. In other words, a router's job is to manage traffic between these networks by forwarding data to their intended IP addresses and allowing multiple devices to use the same internet connection. Additionally, because of its Wi-Fi capabilities, users are able to connect wirelessly to a router. Wireless routers have a wide range of features. For example, the next Nebula 301 router. You can set up schedules to automatically turn the Wi-Fi connection on and off and use parental control to restrict certain websites. You can even prevent devices from accessing the network. All routers come with a default user password, which is recommended to be changed at least once a month to ensure that your neighbors are not piggybacking on your network. Routers provide limited range when it comes to broadcasting a wireless signal. If a router is not able to provide full coverage to your home, a wireless repeater can be used for additional coverage. Most wireless routers today are also integrated with the features of a network switch, wireless access points, and Wi-Fi repeaters. Modems and routers can be combined into a single device and gateway is another term for the combined modem router. The main advantage to using a modem router or gateway is the simplicity of only having a single device to set up. The device is still commonly called a modem, even though it is much more than that. Cables. Networking cables, also called ethernet or fiber optic cables, play an essential role in transferring data through a network. Ethernet cables can be purchased in a few different types, such as CAT5E, CAT6 and 6A, CAT7, and now CAT8. Both CAT5E and CAT6 cables come in an unshielded twisted pair or shielded twisted pair. Shielded twisted pair cables has the individual pairs of wires wrapped in foil which are then wrapped again for double protection. Unshielded twisted pair cables have each pair of wires twisted together. Those wires are then wrapped in tubing without any other protection. CAT7 and CAT8 only come in shielded twisted pairs. All types have an indoor or outdoor variant. STP cables have additional shielding material that is used to cancel any external interference 
that may be introduced at any point in the path of the cable, while UTP cables have no protection against such interference, and their performance is often degraded if this happens. You must be wondering, what is the major differences between CAT5e, CAT6, CAT7, and CAT8? Well, CAT6 cables are designed for operating frequencies up to 250 MHz compared to 100 MHz for CAT5e. This means that a CAT6 cable can transmit more data within the same frame compared to a CAT5e cable, while CAT7 transfers data up to 600 MHz and CAT8 transfers at a higher rate of 2 GHz. Note, when shopping for CAT5 or CAT6 network cables, make sure that you are getting the type and quality cables that you are paying for. International certification requires that these cables are 99% pure copper. However, manufacturers have found a way to cut costs by providing copper-clad aluminum cables which is a cheaper alternative. These cables are aluminum with a copper coating which affects the performance of a network. This is because the data packets and signal cannot be transmitted through aluminum as easily as copper. While CCA network cables work, they should never be used in a business environment. RJ45 connectors. In order to connect your Ethernet cable with your networking devices, a registered Jack 45 will need to be attached to your cable. This small piece of equipment allows you to establish a wired connection with all your devices via the RJ45 port. Network Interface Cards A PC is a great tool that performs complex tasks in the shortest time possible. However, if you need to connect to the internet to stream a movie, send an email, or if you're at work and need access to a file on your company's server, then you'll need to have a working network interface card. Otherwise called NIC, the network interface card provides an RJ45 port which enables the user to plug an Ethernet cable into it. This component is available in the form of a USB adapter or an internal option, for example, a PCI Express card. The wireless network interface card. Similar to the network interface card, a wireless network interface card or a Wi-Fi adapter allows the user to connect to networks wirelessly. These devices can be purchased as an internal add-in card or a USB adapter. Typically used to add Wi-Fi to desktop computers, they can also retrofit older laptops that do not come with Wi-Fi. To conclude, a network keeps us all connected. Phone calls, emails, and social media are all possible because of a network working behind the scenes to ensure that our data arrives at its destination. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of our Tech Classroom series. We hope you stay tuned and join us again. It's time for this week's quiz question. Are you ready? Let's go! Today's quiz question is Name and explain the types of connections provided by internet service providers mentioned in the video. Remember to leave a comment under this video for a chance to enter and win. We will announce our winner on YouTube this Friday at 6 p.m. Good luck!